Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In today's video, we're going to be doing some multiplayer using Mirror in Unity. In the previous video, I showed you guys what Mirror was, how it works, and we looked at an example project, and also I showed you how to go get it from the asset store, install it, set it up in Unity. And for the next few videos on Mirror, I'm going to be explaining different concepts, how they work, and doing some little examples. So in today's video, we're going to be looking at ownership, how to know whether a certain object on the network belongs to you, belongs to other players, is on the server only, and all those kind of things. I hope you guys are looking forward to it. Let's get into it. So this video will be split up into three parts. Part one will be setting up the scene, putting in the network manager, making sure we've got everything we need. Step two, we'll be creating the player and adding all the components we need to the player. And then for step three, we'll be actually writing a script for the player, our custom script, that'll handle some logic for movement. I hope you guys are excited. Let's get into it. Okay, so in the previous video, I said I'd be setting up the GitHub repository for this project and GitHub was actually down at the time, but now it's back up and it's on there. So if you guys need it, you can go to my uh, link in the description to go to GitHub and find the repository mirror multiplay tutorials. And then inside assets, we've got uh, tutorials inside there. We've got today's, which is ownership. It's all about ownership. And then when I make more, they'll come in here too. So you guys can go get the source code there if you need it. So in this video, there's not much coding. I'm actually just going to be doing it all on camera. I'm not going to be skipping anything. Step one, as we said, we want to make sure the scene's set up. So you guys, uh, you don't need these necessarily, but I like using them and I know a lot of other people do. I've used some empty game objects to separate the different things in the scene. So the systems, I've put the network manager. We're going to need to stick on the network manager component, which I covered last video a bit. But this is, it's got so much to it, I can't, you know, it would need its own video to explain what it is and what it does because it does so much stuff. But effectively, it's how you connect as a client or a server. You change some settings. You are meant to override this to actually add custom logic to it. But for the sake of our demo, we don't actually need to override anything. And we want to add one more component, which is the network manager HUD, which is going to show us when we press play, if we wait a second. In the corner, we get that little UI stuff. If you've used Unity multiplayer before, uh, it's the same thing. It's a button for host, client, or server only. Okay, and we're going to be a host and we're going to build the game and run a client so that we can play against ourselves. Okay, for this for the demo. But effectively, yeah, that's it. It's a network manager. We don't really care about players or IPs or anything right now. It all works fine for testing locally. The only thing we care about is setting the player prefab, which is going to be the next step. But the other thing you need to make sure for this example is that your camera is aiming in the uh, Z direction or the Z direction. So the blue arrow, this is on global rather than local in this direction is where it should be aiming because I'm going to spawn players in and make them move off in that direction so we can see what's going on. And yeah, we can move on to step two now and make the player. So for step two, let's make the player. Let's go and create an empty, let's make a sphere actually for the player. Okay, here they are. Let's just reset them. So the player is going to be called player and set the player tag just because. And what we want to do is we want to take off their collider because there's no collisions in this demo. And we want to actually add a custom script for the player which I have already made, but it's got nothing in it. So if I go over to here and drag on this player script, there is, as I said, no code in here yet. We're going to be writing some stuff. And then we also want to add on something called a network identity. If you don't, well, let's show what happens if you don't. If you go to prefabs, save the player in there, and then I'm going to unlock the editor. Okay, if we go across to the network manager, it wants a player prefab, which is what it spawns in when a client joins. So if we actually do lock that again, let's drag in the player. It's not going to like it. It's going to say player prefab must have a network identity. A network identity is, you know, how um, Mirror knows what is what on the network and what belongs to who and all that lot. So if we go to the player, we want to add a network. Whoops. Why is all this stuff on the player? Oh, it's not. It's just because I've got this locked. OK, so on the player, we want to add a uh, network identity. OK, save. And just by adding that, we can now go to the network manager and add the player prefab. So this is something the network, uh, well, the network manager can now spawn, okay? The server can spawn this object and whoever it spawns it for can actually um, have ownership, okay? By You can check on the network identity who owns it and whether you own it, whether you have authority to do stuff. And that's what we need to be doing. So let's actually move on now to write the player script. Okay, we're going to write a simple script to move the player. So we're going to say serialize field private vector free movement. Okay, just so I can set it in the inspector. And then we want in the update function uh, to basically say uh, if we don't press spacebar, so if input, if not input dot get key down, key code space. This is just a really simple example, as I said. Return if we don't press space, but if we do press space, then transform dot translate the movement vector. So we're saying move that much in that direction 
uh, every time we press space. Now, problem with this, there's quite a few problems, okay, that we're going to solve. So one, this would run on every client because every client would have many players and they'd all press space. Well, when they press space, all of the things would move. But we want only, um, you, we only want your input to affect your player. And we also need to sync movement because this won't actually sync across clients. So the way we're going to do that, we've got two ways I'm going to show you today. And the first one is going to be by using a component that comes with mirror that syncs transforms or syncs pos positions basically and rotations and scales. So we go back to the player and we want to add a network transform. Okay, let's open that up. So that's a network transform and this component will sync across the network where this object is. So I'm going to go put that there. So client authority is whether the client has the authority to move this object. If it's false, it means only the server is allowed to move it. So for now, we're going to say, yes, the client has authority, which you don't want most of the time, but for the sake of this, you know, it's fine. And if your game isn't, if you aren't worrying about cheating, then you can allow the player to move themselves. But at the end of the day, if you're making a competitive game, then you definitely want to validate movement yourselves as the server rather than letting the client do it. We're not going to change anything else there. By default now, this object will uh, be synced across clients, but the same problem is still here, which is that you control all of the uh, things. You only want to control your own. So before we even check if you pressed a key, we want to only do this method um, if you have authority over this object. Now, currently we're inheriting from mono behavior. We need to actually inherit from network behavior. Okay. And that allows us to access whether we have authority. So if we have authority, we, oh, well, if we don't have authority, sorry, we return, which means that we end up only actually checking input on the ones we have authority for, which is our player. Equally, we can also add this client tag. I'm not sure if this is actually necessary, but it means that this method only uh, gets called on a client. We don't need the server to run this code. This is only on clients. Okay. And then now this should actually work. If we actually go and build the game, we'll be able to move, but there's still a slight problem, which we'll be sorting out in a minute. Let's go give it a test. Actually, first, we're going to delete the player from the scene, make sure the prefab is saved and up to date. Also, make sure the prefab has a certain amount of movement. So I'm going to set it to one on the z-axis. Then I'm going to delete the player and go build the game. I'll see you guys in a minute. OK, so I've built the game. Here is the editor and here is the built version. We're going to use the editor as the host. So that's the client and the server. We press this and it spawns, it spawns in our player object, which we've registered down here in the player prefab. And if I press spacebar, I'm going to move forwards. Then if I come over here and I press uh, LAN host, sorry, LAN client, I'm going to join and there we are. Now if I press spacebar here, I move forwards. But you notice there's one problem. Here I'm teleporting, which let's pretend that's my intended, you know, intended thing, is that I teleport. Well, the network transform view is actually going to try smoothly syncing the position, which is what you want most of the time. For example, you know, just running around your game as a player, most moving isn't teleporting. So you want to use the transform view like we're doing right now, and it'll be fine because it'll look better. But let's say, for example, you do want to teleport. Then I'm going to show you the second alternative because, you know, if we want to teleport and the player sees us move smoothly, then we're not really seeing the same thing and it might break, you know, well, not the immersion, but it, it's not what you want. So also, yeah, if I leave, I go away and I can join back and I'm back at the start. I can move here. So now I'm really far ahead. If I go back to here, you see me off in the distance. So yeah, it works, but I'm going to show you the alternative for if you actually want sudden movement rather than smooth movement. So for that, go over to the player prefab. We're going to remove the network transform because we don't want that to sync our position. OK, then we go back into the script and rather than uh, translating on the frame, we need to actually get the server to effectively teleport all our players. But the problem with that is we need that to be synced too. So we want to send a method to the server and then get that server to then broadcast that to all the clients. And this allows you to validate on the server. We don't need any validation for this example, but I'm going to show you how you do that. So if we go over here, we want to make a method. So a private void, and it has to start with CMD. And it's a command and then, I don't know, move, for example. OK, like so. And then to actually mark this as a command, we put the command tag before it. Call this from a client to run it on the server. OK, so down here, instead of this, we're actually going to comment that out. And instead, I'm just going to call CMD move. And what that does is I'm a client calling this command, which means that the server then runs this logic. So this logic in here is on the server. The server is then, well, this would be where you do, you know, validate logic here, you know. But then let's pretend we've got no validation. We just want to then say RPC move. 
down here we make another function called well, RPC move. And this is a client RPC. So call this from the server and it runs it on all clients, okay? You can't, as a client, call a method on other clients. You have to tell the server something and then the server decides, yeah, I want to tell all the clients to do something. So as the server, obviously, if there's some validation, then you do it here. But then once you're happy that, you know, this command is what we should be doing, then we say, okay, clients, move. So then the clients say, okay, uh, let's go grab this. Whoops. Transform.translate movement. And I'm just going to put that like this. So the the flow goes, you know, every frame on my, on my client, if it's me, I'm going to check for input and then I'm going to tell the server I wish to move. Okay. Then the server is going to validate logic and then say, okay, everyone move. Okay. And then everyone receives this, all the clients, and they move their, their object. Now, the only problem with this, which comes in with the validation, is that I could technically, you know, get a hacked client and move other players because, you know, this, this constraint is only because I've coded it. Someone else could still connect and run some different code that, you know, at the end of the day, all validation should be done on the server. So this is where you should actually check that the person requesting to move is the right person. Now that will take a bit longer and we're not going to get into those kind of scenarios in this video. This is meant to be simple, but effectively now, yep, I want to try moving. I tell the server, the server's like, cool, everyone move. Okay. And because we're using transform.translate and not a synced transform component, they will teleport rather than smoothly moving on the other clients. So let's go give this a go. So I've built, I'm going to join as a host, going to join as a client, and I'm going to put this here and move. Okay. Look, as I move, it's pretty, pretty much instant. Okay. I move forwards. I go over here. I move. I teleport forwards. And then obviously, yeah, it's teleport thing. I can stop, join back, and I can start teleporting around again. Okay. So as I said, the thing that's happening, we'll go over it one last time and then I'll end the video, is that we say, okay, does this object belong to me? If it doesn't belong to me, then I don't care. Okay, return. Did I press the space key? If I didn't, return. Okay, so at this point, this thing belongs to me and I've pressed the space key. Tell the server I wish to move. The server receives this only. Okay, the server runs the logic for validation if you had any. Okay, and then the server's like, okay, everyone, move. I then call this method, which is RPC move, because it's a client RPC. It actually calls it on all clients. Equally, there is a way to do target RPC, which is to call a method on a certain client rather than all, but we'll get into that in a different video. And then the clients all receive this method call, which then they all move their object, okay? If we had three players, it would also work. You know, you could add another one. I can actually show that before we end the video. If I um, stop, okay, and go over here, let's let's host, then join as a land client. So I'll move forwards a bit. I'll move forwards a little bit. So I got another version of the game. I'm going to join as a client. Now we've got three. Okay, this is going to be very hard to show, but maybe I can do it like this. So as I move forwards, you actually see me on all three clients moving forwards. It all syncs perfectly. Okay. So yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Any questions, feel free to ask down below. Any suggestions, also give those down below. If you like the video, then please leave a like and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. Special thanks to Jason Swearingen, Liz Kimber, Josh Falsam, Beardo Dai, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rack, Joris Letter, Hades Orko, Rene, Budere, and Marie Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If you could help me out by following on any of those or going onto our website and having a look around there, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.